Good morning to you all. You're doing well at the moment. This is the service for the 8th of August. Our theme of service this morning is the living bread, our call to worship from Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Our first item of praise this morning comes from Complete Mission Praise 37, as the deer pants for the water. So Complete Mission Praise 37, as the deer pants for the water, and please sing this lovely hymn along with me. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit shield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit shield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you're my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit shield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Thank you for singing that lovely hymn along with me. Let us now make our prayers of approach and confession to God, as well as the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Lord God, you are wonderful beyond all other wonders. You are much closer than our deepest prayers, higher than our songs of praise, more beautiful than our purest hopes, much more profound than our noblest creeds, far wiser than all the books and all the libraries in all the world, and more loving than all the saints, martyrs and apostles put together. You're humble enough to communicate with and share food with any of us. We offer our worship, renew our vows, receive your grace, and adore you, the living bread, or the bread of life. Brainwashed as we are by the false values which dominate our lives, we come to you seeking your saving intervention in our lives. Without you we descend further into iniquity. With you we are uplifted by your light and your truth. Without you, we are immersed in shame and self-justification. With you, we find love, hope and peace. Please forgive the sins we are familiar with and the sins we fail to recognise. Help us to both know ourselves better and the God of salvation. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Bread For thousands of years, bread has been one of the most important parts of our diet. Bread comes in all shapes, sizes and flavours, 
Bread is often baked into loaves, muffins, breadsticks, buns, bagels and flat breads like tortillas. We love to spread things on our bread, things like butter, jam, honey, cream cheese and peanut butter. Most of us probably eat bread in some form every day. What is your favourite kind of bread? What is your favourite way to eat bread? As far back as Bible times, bread was very important to life. You may remember the time when the Israelites were starving in the desert. Every morning, God sent bread from heaven for the people to eat. I'm sure you also remember the time when Jesus fed a crowd of 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two small fish. Do you remember when Jesus taught his disciples to pray? He taught them to say, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, bread is and always has been a very important part of life. Bread tastes very good. And when we are hungry, eating bread is a good way to satisfy our hunger. But guess what? Tomorrow we will be hungry again. What if there was a bread that we could eat and not be hungry again? Wouldn't that be great? Bread can provide vitamins and minerals to help us grow strong and healthy. But eating bread won't help us live forever. Wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a bread which, if we ate it, we would live forever? Well, there is. Let's call it heavenly bread. It is bread that comes from heaven. After Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two small fish, many people followed him. The only problem was they followed Jesus, not because of his teaching. They followed him because he fed them. Jesus said, you come looking for me because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Then Jesus told them, the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus is the heavenly bread that satisfies our hunger. He is the heavenly bread that gives us eternal life. Eat the bread that came down from heaven. Eat and live. So let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, the living bread, that we might have eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First, first item of um, Bible reading, I should say, the first Bible reading uh, this morning is uh, taken from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 35, and then chapter 6, verses 41 to 51, reading from the New International Version of the Bible. So let us hear the word of God. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And from verse 41. At this the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, It is not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling amongst yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you. The one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. 
Our second reading this morning, also from the New Testament, is taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25, and reading to chapter 5, verse 2. Again, reading from the New International Version of the Bible. So let us hear the word of God. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbour, for we all are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly love children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word, and to him be all glory and praise. A sermon entitled The Bread of Life and Living a Life in Christ. As John Piper has memorably said, the cost of food in the kingdom is hunger for the bread of life. When Jesus, Jesus said he was the bread of life, what exactly did he mean? Beyond its poetic quality, we understand that bread allows us to live. Without it, there can be no life. We can ask, what is life? It is not just existing, it is more. What is its spiritual meaning? It means to have a more fulfilling relationship with God. This relationship can only happen because of Jesus Christ. We exist without Jesus, but Jesus gives us life. Thus Jesus is the bread of life. As St. Augustine has said, our heart is restless until it rests in you. This phrase, the bread of life, explains to us the elements of the Christian life. We see Jesus in the New Testament, in the church teaching we receive, and in our prayers. However, we see him not as an aloof figure, but one who is completely accessible. Due to our faith, we submit ourselves completely to his will. We are now in a loving relationship with God. He is our enduring friend. The bread of life is free and for everyone. This relationship with God is only possible through our relationship with Jesus. We could never have found God unless he had already found us. The bread of life is sad, sadly sometimes refused when we are not willing to see the enormity of what God is offering us. He's offering us so much, so we must accept this with open arms. Therefore, when we grasp the bread of life, all our pangs of hunger and thirst are gone. The human heart finds its place of rest, as St. Augustine has said. We are not simply existing, we are spiritually alive. Even when our life ends, we are still safe and secure. Christ will see to that. Christ gives us life now and in all eternity. We lose all this when we do not accept him into our lives today, tomorrow and all the days to come. So we must accept him into our lives wholeheartedly. Why did the Jews reject Jesus and in so doing reject eternal life? They judge things by their standards. Their reaction to the claim that Jesus was the bread that came down from heaven 
was that he was the carpenter's son who they had watched growing up in Nazareth. How could such a lowly person growing up in poverty be God's divine messenger? He was and he is all of this. T.E. Lawrence or Lawrence of Arabia was a friend to the poet Thomas Hardy. When Lawrence was in the Royal Air Force, he used to visit Hardy and his wife wearing his uniform. The mayoress of Dorchester was also there and bitterly resented the intrusion. She did not know this man. In French, she complained to Mrs Hardy. Lawrence, in perfect French, asked if he could be a translator, as Mrs Hardy could not speak French. A snobbish person made a stupid assumption and was proved devastatingly wrong, just like the Jews were. God has many messengers. It just so happened one came from a lowly carpenter's son. By the Jews dismissing the messenger, they could not hear the message. Do we fail to hear the message too, because we have dismissed the messenger? Not only did the Jews dismiss the messenger because of his humble origins, they quarrelled amongst themselves. They did not ask God what he thought. All they cared about was what they thought. Is that like us? Do we think how a situation affects our wishes before we imagine how it impinges on what God wants? The Jews may have listened to what Jesus said, but they did not want to understand what he meant. Is that like us? Do we listen just to criticise or do we listen to learn? The Jews resisted God drawing them towards them towards uh, him. Is that like us? Do we, like the Jews, put up our resistance to God's pooling power? We must lower our resistance and submit ourselves to his demands on us, as resistance is futile. Jesus, as the bread of life, meant we need him for life. Without him we will die. We do not want to walk aimlessly in the wilderness without ever discovering the promised land. If we refuse Jesus, we are denied this life and the life to come. Whilst if we accept Jesus, we are alive to this life and find new life in the world to come. Are we alive to this life and to Jesus so we embrace the new life to come? In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul gives us practical ways of behaving, giving us our new life in Christ. Paul encourages his congregation to stop lying to each other and to start telling the truth. As part of the body of Christ, we should all be truthful to each other. Are we though? Paul does not want resentment to affect fellow worshippers. He asks his congregation to resolve any disputes before the day's end. The devil will use this to exploit their vulnerability. We must not let this happen in our own lives. We must be willing to move on and not become embittered. Paul wants his congregation never to choose stealing over hard work. In Paul's day, such activity was commonplace, but something that should not be practised by the Christian. We should work so that what we make could be shared with others. It will help us as we do this. We will feel the better for it. Paul encourages his church not to, not to swear at others or to use speech which is destructive to fellow members. Instead, words should be used which promote confidence in others so they can similarly prosper. We upset the Holy Spirit when we conduct ourselves in such a shameful way. The Holy Spirit's purpose is to unite fellow worshippers in love. We must be responsive to the Holy Spirit in our lives today. Paul tells his congregation not to be bitter, angry, quarrelsome, slanderous or malicious in any way. Instead, Paul tells them to be kind, compassionate and caring. This is the way Christ acted. This is the way we must behave. Paul encourages his church to live a life of love. We are encouraged to show the selfless love which Jesus had rather than a selfish type of love. Just as the believers gave 
a sacrificial temple offering. Jesus made a sacrificial offering for us by giving us his life on the cross. We must respond as believers. Are any of us in despair in our Christian lives? Have we reached a point where there is no purpose in us following the narrow path? No matter what we do, we always come up short. As a result, we do nothing, because if we do not act, we have not failed. Is that like us? Due to our inability to overcome our perpetual sinfulness, we feel failures. We are not failures. None of us are. We must understand that when Paul asks us to live a Christian life, we are not being asked to behave in this way to confirm our status as believers. Our salvation is determined by what Jesus does for us, not what we have done or have not done. We are not being asked to behave in a way which makes God happy. All we must do is believe. Our obedience does not increase our holiness. If we stay faithful to Christ's renewing work, we will be renewed ourselves. We must remain faithful. We are the new creation in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. We should move away from deception, bitterness and slander to be kind, compassionate, forgiving and loving. Through our spiritual renewal, we become more like Christ. We will always be short of perfection, but that should never stop us seeking it. As Vince Lombardi has said, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Jesus would have approved of that sentiment, and so should we. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us now make our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession to God, so let us pray. Most loving God, we take you for granted. By your spirit, change us. We thank you for our lives, for family, friends, neighbours and strangers who have pointed us in Christ's direction. We thank you for those who have enlarged our faith. We thank you for strengthening our spirit when we are tempted to falter. We thank you for helping us with our fears and disappointments when we thought you were distant. We thank you for any kind word to restore our hope and every confronting word which speaks a difficult truth. We thank you for our fallible church, communities which we have worshipped, shared fellowship with and given service to a wider world. We thank you for those who have assisted and those who have challenged us. Help us, Lord, when our prayers seem insufficient to solve the world's problems. We pray for those who have given up. Please give them warmth, hope and love. We pray for anyone who receives injustice and abuse. Please lift the downtrodden and heal the broken in mind, body and spirit. We pray this violent world is transformed into one of peace. We pray for the hungry, the sick, the homeless and the bereaved. We pray for your church. Let us encourage each other in fellowship and prayer. We pray for anyone with coronavirus, just as we pray for their carers and for their families. We pray for the government and for the scientific community and every difficult decision that they must take on a daily basis. We pray for the global rollout of the vaccine and the public's positive response. We pray for anyone awaiting any other surgical procedures does not have a lengthy wait. All these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A final hymn this morning comes from Complete uh, Mission Praise, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. And that is Complete Mission Praise 857.
So complete mission praise 857, I the Lord of sea and sky. And please sing this lovely hymn along with me. I the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts are satisfied, I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Thank you for singing that lovely hymn along with me. Let us now say the benediction together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this act of worship this morning. Thank you for singing the hymns along with me. I hope you have a really good week and I will see you again at the same time next week. So thank you and goodbye.